Hi everybody and welcome again to Nerd of the Third Power, your one-stop shop for all things nerdy and awesome. I'm your host and master of ceremonies, Dr. Gonzo. Uh, Kat is uh, stuck in traffic, so she'll get here when she gets here, but Skyblaze, how are you this week? I have a cold and my country is falling apart, but otherwise I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'd explain more, but, you know, no religion, no politics. So. Yeah. But you know you you probably you probably know what's going on. Yeah, look at the look on BBC News. That will tell you everything you need to know. And uh, and Brian, you seem uh, all by your lonesome there in the uh, in the correspondence corner. I'm doing all right. It's it's fine. I'm kind of getting used to it. Uh, my spreading as myself out on the desk and laying down. It's all kind of nice and cozy. Yeah, you, you. If if I find that you spent another night here in the studio, I'm going to start charging you rent. Ha <laughs> Then I'm not going to tell you. All right, we got a fun show for you tonight. Tonight we are discussing the Warcraft film. This is the third video game movie of this year, uh, and and so let's hope we can we can actually get a decent film out of this year, and you know, not just a string of disappointments. The hate was palpable in that sentence. Just it's the third. <laughs> Look, I'm coming off. Of, I'm coming off of Ratchet and Clank, Angry Birds, and 48 Hours of No Sleep. I'm a little grumpy. Well, it's your mistake going to see Angry Birds, so that I feel like that's on you. Yeah. So, but of course, there is procedure to follow. So we're going to begin as always with Ask a Geek, and our first question actually comes from neither the email nor the Facebook. It's just one that I heard over the the course of the week that I want to put to you guys because I think it, it it has potential for some fun stories. And the question is, what is something that is is petty as hell that you know you shouldn't get mad at, but it drives you up the wall anyway? Like I'll give you mine as an example. My thing is people who are way too into their hot sauce. Like, if you, if, like Brian, you live in Texas. You've, I'm sure you've met at least one of these people who, like, you know, their hot sauce is just, like, their, their reason for being, and they're like, you know, oh, this sauce is made from the Peruvian death pepper, you know, the hottest peppers you can import into the United States. You know, have you, have you, met, have you met any of those people? Believe it or not, I met those people outside of Texas. In Texas, it's mostly barbecue sauce. Uh, but I do know the people that you are talking about. Yeah, it's just like, you know, oh, you know, this this, this pizza will burn the, this sauce will burn the, the taste buds every time. It's like, oh, blow it out your ass. Like, literally blow it out your ass. I hope that sauce just dissolves your innards and you just crap yourself inside out. Then he will, in fact, be blowing it out of the, his ass. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, so, so I, I put it to you guys. What's something that you know you, you shouldn't be angry at that's just petty as hell, but it still just drives you up the wall? Okay, I've got one. Right, you know, you know when you go to um, electronic stores. I don't know if you have Maplins over there, but we, the the big electronic store over here is is Maplins, and uh, you go to the section where it's like they have um, things like HDMI cables and uh, optical sound cables, and you have like you know your average one, which is about a tenner, and your cheap ass one, which is about a fiver. And then you have the really super duper fucking expensive ones with like gold plating on it and fucking diamonds inside it and some other shit. And it's like, oh, the highest quality you can possibly have and uh, made of the hair of virgins from Tibet or some shit. And it's 120 quid. (laughs) And it's like, it's fucking digital. It's either there or it's not. Either the signal exists or it doesn't exist. You do not need fucking gold plating, fucking platinum bullshit on the end of this. <laughs> the fuck is wrong with you? I I, I call that cabling for Vegas pimps. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, because they they're, they're over here too, and I think a lot I I know a lot of my friends who have the exact same reaction. Like, what is this shit? Like, like I don't know. <laughs> like I could see needing that high quality cable if you were setting up like an amphitheater and you had needed like really long cable because the signal does degrade after so many feet. But if you're just oh, hooking up like your Xbox an, to your television, opt- yeah, on an optical cable it really doesn't. Yeah. On oh, an optical I- cable it will keep fucking bouncing until the end of fucking time. Oh yeah, because that's a- how optical signals work. You should be fully aware of this, Gonzo. For those who are not aware. Optical cables, it's, it's, uh, it's a, it's gla- it's a, well, it's not glass, it's some sort of plastic tube inside, and the, the signal will just bounce using refraction, and you'll just keep fucking going, because of I, light, it does that. Oh yeah, an, op- an optical cable, yeah, you, you, you can fucking, like, you, you don't I, need I, anything like that, but like, I could un- yeah, I could understand it if it was sound cabling, 
uh, analog sound cabling because that signal does degrade and you know if you've got something that's uh, got a, a gold connector on it it will increase the signal especially if you're taking it over a very very long distance not so much if you if it's going two fucking feet and it's a fucking digital signal because it doesn't matter the signal's either there or it's not it's a one or it's a zero it's there or it's not it's dead or it's alive now the i gotta end. now i gotta ask you a question i gotta ask you if you've seen these because we i've seen them over here and it just like i was like that's it i i need to clock out now because this is no longer my world have you seen the, the, the cables that have designs on the cord yes it's like it's like pimp cords or something and i'm just like why like, I've seen, there's like bright pink ones with fucking bunnies on and all sorts of shit, and I'm like, for fuck's sake, it's going to be behind your telly. Uh, it's like, it's like, uh, was Andy War- like was Andy Warhol just like out of work or something? Do we need like Jackson Pollock designed HDMI cables? Like, what the fuck is going on? And these things are like 80, 90 bucks, and I'm just like, no, no, just no. Brian, what about you? What's what, what's what's something that drives you up the wall that you know really shouldn't? How I don't know. I can follow that up. Holy shit! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, did my rant kind of steal your thunder there? I do apologize. Yeah, that, no, it's fine because it was amazing. But I was like, oh god, like, like what drives you up the wall? Well, like, oh, I don't like it when my books are not alphabetical <laughs> order. Um. <laughs> well, well, you do edit the show, so you could always put her rant after yours and lead up to it. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's very true. I do have this power, but no, like it's it was. I I, literally, I, I mean, I have stuff. Um, I, well, I was playing D, a lot of times when I play D and D. Again, this is just my I guess just being me and uh, being neurotic about it. But like, I don't like my dust, my dust, my dice mingling with other people's dice. Like I'm like these are mine. I need to keep control of these. Like that really fucking matters. <laughs> you're, you're 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 a dice segregationist. Like I'm sure I'm sure I'm sure your dice are perfectly nice dice, but I don't want them playing with my dice. Well, when when my buddy next to me is rolling ones and twos, I'm like, no, 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 don't affect mine. Fuck yours. <laughs> oh well, oh well, no, see, no, you've got you've got the dice superstition thing going on. Yeah, that do you, that... Do you punish your dice? Do I what? Or, or do you punish your dice if they fail you? Oh God, yeah, I don't. You, I have. That's why I have three d twenties. Oh, see, no, no, that's a, that's a legitimate concern because, like, if the guy next to you, if he's just rolling ones all night and it gets in your pile, then no, that's like you're like, no, you got to quarantine that fucker. Like, don't go infecting my dice. No, that's a, that, that's a legit concern. I love that this is a thing with role players. I've done it as well. You know, the thing where you turn all your dice up to the highest number, like D20s up to 20, hoping that it will train them to roll in that way. <laughs> and, if, and if anybody mentions grappling rules, everybody covers their dice and starts praying. <laughs> uh, oh, brilliant. But no, that's that that's a legit concern. I can totally get behind that. That is not a legit concern. This is something is we have not, put this into is, our no, once heads. Again, this is not a legitimate concern. This is not how probability works. We are just all completely fucking mad. But uh, Kat's here. Kat, how are you? I'm good. I got out of my training early, so I was able to come at normal time. Okay. All right. Well, uh, we've already we've already got ourselves started here. So uh, our first Ask a Geek question for this week is, what is something that pisses you off that you know really shouldn't. So, like, for example, we've already done ours. Mine was people who are way too into their hot sauce. Skyblaze is, like, pimp my cable. Uh, Brian's is uh, dice mingling. What's what's something that drives you up the wall that you know really shouldn't? Um, I'd say shipping. Um, people who are way too into their ships and just are like, oh, my God, this character's so in love with this character, and they're my OTP, and and then just, like, like gets on you about not supporting their OTP and act like everything that they ship is canon and then try and petition companies to change the characters to fit their OTP. That really bugs me. Even though I'm very much like, hey, ship whatever you want to ship. It's, it just gets to a point where it's too much. It's too much and you need to calm down. See that I just, some, some, of, some of the the people who do that just like confuse the hell out of me because like like I've got a friend who does that like if two if if two characters make eye contact she's like they are now soulmates so all right so that but uh, yeah that was a that was a that was a fun question I I I, I enjoyed that so uh, maybe I, I might see about finding other sort of random topics to include with the Ask a Geek but anyway now let's go to the ones that uh, people have actually uh, sent to us. 
All right, so, so uh, the first one here comes from Joe, and it's addressed to uh, the Game of Thrones fans in, on the show, and it's about what, what, what do the Game of Thrones fans on the show uh, think about the, the season finale and, and the, how the previous season has carried itself out? I stopped watching. Yeah, last season was really rough. That was a really hard season to get through. It was so uninspiring, and it was everything was such a downer last season. This season has been generally the opposite of that this season sort of opened strong with giving you things that you want stuff that's good that happens to people you like which this is not a show where we're used to that um and that's how you know that they're going ripped from what george r r martin wrote and uh D &D, the the show producers are just sort of making their own stuff up now because good stuff is happening to good people um that being said the the last two episodes of this season were some of the most intense scenes this show has ever offered and that's including the red wedding like the shit that has happened in the last two episodes has been insane um i loved it quite a lot but it was also quite heartbreaking okay and uh he's got a second question here what what is something you'd like to see in the next season um, since we are not likely to get Lady Stoneheart, and it sort of appears like Arya is actually going to be filling the, uh, the, the position in her own sort of going to go around and kill people way, um, of course I want to see Clegane Bowl, mountain versus, <laughs> mountain versus hound, two of them go in, only one can come out, <laughs> um, I need that desperately, but, uh, after that... Um, I don't know, because this season gave me so many things that I wanted. It gave me cold hands. Um, it killed a bunch of people who really needed to die. I guess the um, the next thing that I really want to see happen, without spoiling too much, is that they're in King's Landing right now. Jamie needs a king slaying real bad. And I think that's what's going to happen. So I'm, I've got my fingers crossed that Jamie's going to live up to his name of Kingslayer. And... Uh, it, it, take this new ruler down because shit's gone crazy <laughs> okay all right uh next question here comes from antonio and uh it is for me and uh, he asked what are my thoughts on the skyrim remaster and uh i'm gonna i'm gonna be honest this is this this is an announcement that i kind of had to kind of eat some humble pie on because when i first heard about it i was like incensed i was pissed i was like really we want fucking elder scrolls 6 and you're just you're just you're just throwing skyrim out just with a with a, a new coat of paint like a, a blatant cash grab you know i'm so disappointed in you bethesda uh, wait people who have the original game are gonna get it for free hmm well i feel like a right wally uh so i i, I I have kind of mixed feelings on it. Uh, on the one hand, uh, you know, I think it's I think it's nice that the people who have the original game are going, at least on PC, are going to get it for free, um, so that we don't have to pay for a game that we have that you know we pretty much already paid for. Um, my two major concerns with uh, with at least the PC version are: is this just going to be a, a, a graphic nip and tuck, or are they actually going to go in and start fixing some of the bugs that were in the original game? Because I love Bethesda, I love their games, but you know, Jesus Christ, guys, you know, you need to hammer out some of these kinks before you put put it out on the assembly line. Uh, and the other concern that I have is how are mods going to work? Um, you know, are are because I, I, Skyrim's not a game to me anymore. It's a custom car. I just want to load up as much stuff as I can onto it until it breaks. So I'm running like 300 mods, which is a bitch and a half to try and, and, and set back up again anytime I have to reinstall the game. So I'm wondering if I'm going to be able to use the same mods with the vanilla game with the, the remastered version. Um, so, but we'll have to see how that goes. Um... I am uh, interested in... I, I'm not going to get it for consoles, but I am interested in seeing how the mod scene is going to work for the console crowd. Um, the one thing that I am kind of disappointed at is uh, that it looks like we're not going to be able to use the Skyrim script extender for consoles, which I, I, I really feel bad for the console crowd about because w without the script ex extender, you can't use some of the best mods out there. Um, so we're probably on, only going to see stuff on consoles like, you know, maybe like, you know, the odd new weapon or some reskinnings. We're not going to see anything like 
like Falscar, I don't think, on uh, on consoles, which, you know, I, I really feel kind of sad for the, the, the console crowd about it. It's like, I hope that Bethesda figures out a way to make it so that you, console users can use the script extender so they can have access to all those awesome mods. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty much my thoughts on uh, Skyrim Remastered. I wish they had announced a, a whole new Elder Scrolls game, but, you know, it, it, it makes a nice placeholder. So... And uh, he also has another question about E3, but I haven't been following E3 because I've just been so destroyed with my new job. So uh, let's see. Um, Brian's been kind of left out. Let's see if we got one here for Brian. Uh, Oh, here's a good one here. Uh, Here's one from Rick, and he asks, what is your favorite version of Superman? Oh. Uh. (laughs) Uh. Uh, Rather, ra- Brian, do you like <laughs> Superman at all? Yeah, I do. The problem is there's been some really good versions of Superman. So, okay, so let me see if I can't narrow down, like, is he, is he just asking about comics or just in general? You know, it's it, he's just asking favorite, favorite, he, the, the question is literally, what is your favorite version of Superman? That's literally all oh. there is to it. So uh, let's, let's, let's kind of, let's kind of split it in two. Your favorite on-screen Superman and your favorite comic book Superman. Okay, well, favorite on-screen is always going to be Christopher Reeves, no matter what anyone says. Um, and if you don't realize why, just watch Superman, Superman two, and then you'll get it. Uh, favorite comic book one is probably. I'm trying to think of a really good era of Superman. Like what? Like because because there's a really good Silver Age Superman. And it's kind of really sil- silly Silver Age Superman. Um, and there's like some really good stories that happen around you know 2000s and 80s and 90s, a little bit of 2000s. So like it's 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 almost very hard to sort of pin down. Um, I like kind of where he, what they kind of did with him in Kingdom Come. I felt like because he felt very flawed but still very Superman in that film. film. Oh, King, Kingdom and, Come was amazing in oh. uh, in that comic, I should say. So like it's it this is like like this is a real. You don't think this is a hard question? It is a, actually kind of a hard question. Because just because so many people have, t- uh, has, have have worked on Superman, and some people have so many good stories, both in canon and Elseworld titles. It's very hard, like to pick one. Well, Dave, may, may I put forward a candidate? I know I'm not the the the, the big comic book reader, but uh, may I put forward a candidate? Uh, which candidate are you putting forward? Uh, All Star Superman. All Star Superman's a good candidate. Yeah, because like I don't, I don't, I don't, I've never cared for Superman. I've never, I've never thought him a very interesting character. Uh, but All Star Superman, like that's 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 easily one of my top five favorite comics. Yeah, yeah, I, I would definitely agree. That's one of the probably the best and one of the best like modern interpretations of the character. At least the one that's happened last I want to say decade. Wow, I'm old. Well, for 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 the listeners who haven't read uh, All Star Superman, why why do we think that? <laughs> well, it's because that so Grant Morrison sort of just he brings out what the like the best qualities of the of Superman and what he does also sort of acknowledging some of the sillier things that he's done in his, in his entire career um, and the whole thing of the story is that he's he eventually sort of learns he's dying so he kind of goes on this big uh, bucket list of like what can I do before I go to make this world a better place like in his dying days he's like I need to make everyone else feel you know better like shit you know like we should be making him feel better but again he just puts everyone else before him he's like he's like i haven't cured cancer yet i need to go cure cancer like shit (laughs) what 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 have we done with our lives yeah (laughs) so um but yeah basically all-star superman uh look at the superman in man of steel and batman v superman uh, the Batman and All Star Superman, the Batman, yeah, the the Superman and All Star Superman, the Superman and All Star Superman is everything that Superman is not. And so uh, the, now we're gonna see right into our discussion topic this week, which is the Warcraft movie, which uh, I, I admit to, uh, to to viewing with some trepidation because, as I've said, I've I've come from two very bad experiences with video game films uh, so far. So who knows? Maybe Warcraft will break the mold. And uh, we have kind of an interesting dichotomy in, uh, in, in the two people who've seen the film. We have Skyblaze, who is a, a Warcraft nut, is very familiar with the lore, knows a lot about the film's background, and Brian, who is less so. Hi. 
So we're going to get to see both sides of the coin here because this, the, 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 the reviews I've heard of the film so far have been very divided. It's like you either love it because you're familiar with the source material or you hate it because you're not. So uh, we're going to sort of examine that. So uh, let's so uh, Skyblaze, uh, let's, uh, let's start with you first. Give us a, a, a bit of background on this film and where it comes out and where it comes from for like the two people who have not heard of World of Warcraft. And uh, for those <laughs> for those two people, welcome to the welcome to civilization. You know, it's great. How, how, Try the veal. How, yeah, how was it living under that rock in the cave on Mars? <laughs> um, despite people saying that it's the World of Warcraft movie, it's actually the Warcraft movie because it's based on the real-time strategy game. Uh, specifically the first one, Orcs and Humans. There's some stuff from later on, but mostly the plot is based on that one. Um, they've taken some liberties with it because uh, demons don't appear in this, despite demons being a big fecking deal in Warcraft and having an entire expansion named after them, the Burning, uh, Burning Crusade. Um, so, on an alien planet called Drenor, um, a guy called Gul'dan, who's a, a warlock and evil, evil, very evil, he gets up in the morning, he eats his evil toast with his evil jam and puts on his evil cloak and goes out and does evil. <laughs> did you just make that up or did you rip that from something I'd heard something similar ages ago I can't remember where it's from but yeah it, it was it was based on something I heard ages ago which is actually the best description of that character yeah mostly <laughs> uh, and he's a warlock which means that he used the magic of what they refer to in the film as fell um, F-E-L uh, which is the power of um, the souls of living creatures uh, it's basically the power that demons use in uh, the wider Warcraft universe. And he's using this power to open a portal to another world because Drenor is tearing itself apart. Um, probably because he's been using the power of the souls of living things to do evil magic with while eating his evil jam on his evil toast. Um... A guy called Duratan, who's the head of the Frostwolf clan, and his pregnant wife, Draka, uh, is like, I'm not sure about this, but yeah, okay, so our people don't all snuff it. We'll join your horde. Um, Gul'dan open, uses the life force of a bunch of Draenei um, to open the portal to Azeroth, where, because he can only, he can only open it for a little opal for a little while, the orcs that have gone through into the human world start rounding up all the humans to use as more fuel for the portal. Um, on the other side, on the alliance spit, sorry, I have to do that, it's the law. Um, you've got Anduin Lothar, who's the brother in law to King Lane of Stormwind, and uh, a tiny baby Khadgar! He is so young and adorable. Um, and they've realised that there's shit is going down, and they managed to capture a half orc slave called Garona um, to try and stop them. Supposedly, on the side of the humans is the guardian of Azeroth, Medivh, um, but turns out that Medivh is actually has been corrupted by the powers of Fel and is slowly turning into a demon or something. It's not really all that clear. Um, and uh, they managed to attempt to broker a peace with Duratan's Frostwolves, um, but it goes quite badly. Um, and Gul'dan turns on them and kills all of Duratan's Frostwolves. Uh, and then there is a massive fight, and um, in the midst of all of this, uh, Thrall, or Goel, as he, to give him his original name, is born, um, and is put into a raft on a river to be captured by humans. Um, Medivh gets purified by uh, Khadgar, um, and they, in his dying act, he manages to op change the portal's direction from uh, Drenor to Stormwind so the human troops can escape. And this is all in the film? This is all in the film. Okay. Um, and that's more or less where the film ends. So you've still got orcs who are on Azeroth. 
who are kind of more or less stuck there at this point. Um, um, and it's kind of a bit of a standoff. Okay. I want to point out that, like, so if you had asked me to explain the film, I would have done something very similar to what she explained. Here's the problem I had. So after I left the film, I paused outside my theater and went, I don't remember a single character's name. <laughs> <laughs> I sat there, I was like, um, uh, oh, this is going to be a terrible wave. Please don't ask me about this film. Because I could tell you what they did. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, so I guess this brings us to the next, uh, the next, the, the first bit, which is, my first question, which is, what are your general thoughts on the film? So, uh, Brian, as someone who's, 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 who's what, well, first off, how familiar are you with, with the Warcraft backstory? Okay, so I played... The last Warcraft game I played was Warcraft 2, years upon years ago. I never got Warcraft 3. I never got into World of Warcraft. So any knowledge I might have had, I probably forgot. Okay. So as someone who's not, who's not by and large familiar with the Warcraft lore, what were your general thoughts of this film? Um, it's not as bad, I think, as a lot of people try to make it out to be. Um, like, Because I think people like just like, oh, this is just god-awful. I was like, no, I was... You know, I watched it. I was, I was entertained. You know, thing there's some really nice cinematography and all this sort of uh, wonderfulness going on. Uh, the story gets very vague, or the fact, not necessarily vague, more the fact that, like I feel like I should have done homework. You know, I feel <laughs> like I should have came in with a book or something or a cheat. You, you sheet. need, you need the yeah, you need the Wowpedia entries yeah. like uh, at your at your elbow as you're yeah. watching it. Basically, <laughs> and like, and I can see where like if you're walking in like me, either a don't know anything about the Warcraft lore or forgot about the Warcraft lore or anything like that, you're probably gonna be confused because there were several times I went movie. Are we gonna explain this? That's a new scene now. So is the answer no? <laughs> Okay, so now Skyblaze, as someone who is intimately familiar with the Warcraft lore, uh, as as a lover would be, as one might say, uh, what were your thoughts on uh, the Warcraft? First of all, I would not go that far because that's creepy. Um, <laughs> if secondly, I have, if I haven't made somebody uncomfortable, I'm not doing it right. Is is that just a statement for this episode, or your general attitude towards life? Actually, uh. no. Don't answer that. Don't answer that. Um, attempting to kind of view it relatively objectively, and it, it's near impossible because I've I've been playing World of Warcraft since uh, just before the release of Burning Crusade, so that's a fucking long time. Um, I have played Warcraft three. I'm not very good at the real time strategy, so I'm spectacularly bad at it. But I have played it. Uh, I haven't played either of the. I haven't played the first two. Um, again, I'm really bad at real-time strategy. Uh, but attempting to kind of divorce myself from that fandom element, I thought it was a, a fine, a perfectly acceptable low fantasy film in the the traditions of, think of, of the fantasy movies of the 80s. I thought it was fine. Okay. Um, as somebody who is familiar with the Warcraft lore, I got a massive kick out of going, oh, that's that guy, and he's like 12, and that's that place, and there are elves, and there's still high elves, not blood elves at this point, and that's really awesome, and that's Stormwind, and doesn't it look pretty, even though I hate the Alliance. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, wow, Gul'dan looks fucking terrifying, and it it was just like, uh, one of the nice things about this was that a lot of the CGI was really, really nice, and the, the locations look at them bloody amazing well that's why this this film took a while to get made because apparently the director duncan jones was like no 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 more details make it look better make it look good you know putting a lot of heart and effort and i'm going to probably assume money into making everything look as well as it did and there's a couple little neat little if you look closely at the orcs and what they're in like, like oh shit that looks exactly like it would be from the game you know yeah a, a lot of it does conform pretty much exactly to the game models. Um, things like the armor and the swords and the shields and stuff. It's like you can identify which one that is. Yeah. And a friend of mine was going, "This guy's holding this weapon, and this guy's holding having this shield." It's like, okay, I'm not that nerdy. 
<laughs> but that's pretty cool. Well, well good it, for it, you. <laughs> it, it it puts it, it makes me it, it puts a smile on my face to hear about this because you know we talked a little we talked in the in the Ratchet and Clank review about how that film felt like it was sort of ashamed to be a video game movie. And I hear, like, the, the, the video game fans, you know, watching this film and kind of geeking out about how faithful it is to the source material. And it's like, you know, if, if, if nothing else, this is a movie that's not ashamed to, of its source material. It's a movie that's not ashamed to say it's a video game film. I'm not yeah. Gonna, yeah, I mean, I guess or no. Like, I think it knows where it's coming from, which is better. Like, I feel like they came into, like, we're not necessarily making a video game movie, we're making a fantasy film that just happened to start as a video game. Like, there's, I, I feel like there's that more of a connect going on. But I can stand doing that because I think a lot of the problems with video game adapt, uh, trying to adapt a video game into a movie is that when you're talking about a movie, you're talking about a couple of hours of content. You're talking about a video game, you're talking about tens, potentially hundreds, or even thousands, in the case of World of Warcraft, hours of content. How do you do you reduce that into that space of time without either making it incredibly confusing or making it really shallow? Or you've got the opposite problem where you've got something like bloody the Tetris movie. Oh, Jesus, God. Or um, yeah, Angry I, I, Birds, which is like, there's no content here. It's pure gameplay. How are you c- converting this to a movie? That There's nothing here to work with. So I can understand them saying, "Looks, let's look at it as a movie first, and extract from this law the interesting bits that we want to tell a story about." That's a great way of of, of doing it, I think. Okay, so uh, let's talk, let's start breaking the movie down into component parts. So Skyblaze has already explained the, the 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 plot to us. So, what did you guys think of how the how the plot and the script played out? I think it had a very rushed third act. Um, I think they spent a little bit too much time uh, building everything up and not quite enough time doing the the climax and the denouement. Uh, that was kind of a problem for me, but I can understand why they felt the need to do all that establishment. Um, because it is, such, I mean, one of the things that pissed me off when I was reading some of the reviews was somebody saying, oh, it doesn't have the depth of Lord of the Rings. Fuck you! Yes, it does. You're not paying attention. Um, you, you just have to kind of, like, look at some of the things that are hinted at or, or alluded to or seen in the background where it's like, okay, that's that thing and this is that guy and it's referring to this thing. Um, you know, this event which is going to happen... Uh, Things like um, th- all the stuff related to Medivh and um, Elodie, who's the the previous guardian. Um, it's like it's all there. You're just not paying attention if you're not seeing it. Uh, but it is so. There is so much of it that you need that time to establish. Kind of these are the people we give a shit about right now. We may give a shit about these other people at some other point. We don't give a shit about them right now. And there was there was a, there was a lot like the the film definitely was being a little bit like clever because I, I think the easy way out would be like obviously the orcs are just bad guys, you know these are obviously the villains and you have to have the guys you know kill them. But the film takes its time to go like no no to sort of explain they're not bad. They have an evil leader. Yes, like. He's so evil, even they kind of stopped liking him at one point. Mm. But, you know, they're just, they have their own, I say, the, things that they need they're people. to do. Yeah. They are, in fact, yeah, they are not people, they're characters. And you yeah. believe them as characters. And you believe, oh, okay, so they have their own conflict, their own uh, fears, and their own, like, re- yeah, they wanted to come over here because their planet was dying. And then one guy goes, you know, our, this guy's kind of killing this planet, too. I feel like this is just going to happen again. Maybe if we, you know, do something about it and hook up with these guys, um, we can figure this all out and have some sort of, you know, peace. And I was like, oh, this is, this is a lot cleverer than I thought they, they might have gone with the film. He's kind of like, you know, I don't want to be that guy, but you know, we were following this guy and our planet died. Now we're following, we're still following this guy, and this planet's starting to die. I'm thinking there might be, you know, some relation here. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. And and. It, 
So, but you know, there are some, like I said, there's some vagueness, especially with Medivh. Like, Medivh, yeah, yeah the, cause, the Guardian. Because you follow him, you obviously it's like, oh, something's wrong with this guy. And then he turns into a fucking demon. You're like, whoa, sh- whoa, okay, well, time out. You know, I really feel like we should probably explore this a little longer. And he's dead. Okay. So let's so we start talking about the characters a bit. Let's start talking about uh, the cast of this film. So what did you guys th- think of the cast of this movie? Hey, Clancy Brown was in this film. Yeah, it's true. Sorry, this is like a needle tidbit of the day. <laughs> okay. On the on the on the the horde side, uh, most of them were under such heavy makeup; it was really hard to recognize them unless they did have a very distinctive voice like Clancy Brown. Um, but well, the the makeup was fucking well. The makeup slash CGI was amazing. Well, that's a presentation, um, which we'll yeah. get to. <laughs> uh, but for the most part, they did a really good job. Um, they they were very believable. I mean, the only guy, the only one I was like eh, not sure about this is uh, the the Alliance Queen. Um, I've forgotten her name. Lady Lady Terrain? Ter- 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 something t- like that. Yeah, so it starts with a T. <laughs> uh, she, she's, I think she's actually an original character for the film. I don't think she... I think she's mentioned in World of Warcraft, but she's implied to be dead. Um, and she's a bit... Uh, I'm, I'm not 100% convinced by you. You're trying your best, dear, but... I don't know if you're quite there. Yeah, she. It was. I, I will agree that like she was like I must be you know regal and important, but it just c- comes off haphazard. Like yeah, you, you're prote- You I can tell you're acting to be a queen. Like that's you know like you're not a queen yet. You're just you're trying to be a queen. Like so you take if, this if dagger been, and you'll be fine. Yeah, if there'd <laughs> if yeah if there'd been some some backstory about this, it's like yeah, I I I was just a commoner and I'm I'm trying to to do this but there isn't because it's an original it's character who was invented for this film so the de- that that backstory doesn't exist um i mean a lot of, where, a lot of, a lot of these actors i don't know i honestly I, outside of like i think dominic cooper i who played um <laughs> king Rin. yeah uh, sure yeah that that too uh like i don't know a lot of these actors so they're all new to me yeah, I, I'm not. Ver- I'm not very good at recognizing actors in the first place because I'm. I'm not very unless they're somebody I've known from a lot of other things like ge- geek things. Yeah. So a lot of these people I don't know. Um, but I think most for the most part they did a great job. I really liked uh, the guy who was playing Medivh. I really liked the guy who was playing um, Garona, or the girl who was playing Garona, and I really I liked Juratan. Um, the uh. The, uh, baby Cadgar was adorable. He was like so bumbling and had no idea what was going on and was like, I, I think there's something's bad happening. Why is no one listening to me? Oh shit, everything has just gone to fuck. <laughs> okay. uh, I thought he was great. It, 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 I liked it, it, him. This, and a lot of it's also like, because the, the heavy makeup, like I know Gold Dan was played by a guy named Daniel Wu and Daniel Wu is a, is a stunt guy. Um, for the most part. So they got, you know, so they has sort of a, someone to play this character uh, who doesn't have a lot of acting, acting experience. I don't know if he actually played the voice of Gul'dan, but he was there and did yeah did stuff. You know, so, and Gul'dan is su- such an important character in this. Yeah. Because he, he drives the entire plot. It's a, it's very much a antagonist-driven plot, this. Okay. All right, so we've, we've, we've talked about uh, a bit about the cast. Uh, so let's talk about probably the, the, the biggest thing that this film has going for it, and that's the presentation, the visuals, the music, the special effects. So, uh, Skyblades, let's start with you. What did you think of the presentation of this film? I think it looks great. I think, I mean, Stormwind looks amazing. Uh, Deadwind Pass and Karazhan look... I mean, I was stunned when I first saw Karazhan. Uh, that's the, the big tower where Medivh lives. Uh, I was like, whoa, that's what it looks like when it was still in one piece. <laughs> uh, because in World of Warcraft, you go to it as a dungeon and it's it's ruined and filled with uh, gribblies. 
Um, and it's like, wow, that looks fucking incredible. Um, and there is a spider on my wall. Please excuse me, I need to go and find Tony so I can remove it. <laughs> well, while she goes... I'm sorry, this is terribly important. <laughs> she goes, she, she'll go kill the spider. But like, no, I, I, like I said, no, I don't... No, no, if, if an agent of the enemy has found his way into your home, you must destroy it. <laughs> it's quite right. But it's 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 definitely like like no there's there's detail placed into this like insane detail about everything going from uh, the costumes the CGI and, and the locations to to just ridiculous amounts to the to the point where like you you were thinking someone you know had just worked themselves to you know the edge of death going it looks perfect you know like Jesus Christ take a vacation like that's like. <laughs> <laughs> and and and, a lot, and then you have to think about it too is that a lot of the details they had to let sort of grab especially from like early games was very small and pixelated and you couldn't quite tell and not until you got to like you know world of warcraft and warcraft 3 where you can kind of look into it or and get some of the novelizations have some more of like i guess explanations behind everything um but like no it looks it looks beautiful you know for for a movie it took 10 years to make it you know, it looks beautiful. And I would hope in 10 years it would look beautiful. Uh, there's only a couple of times I felt like some of the presentation went wonky. And it just really more along the lines was because they probably just needed to get it set and put it together and through. Uh, but other than that, no, everything seemed to, like, click. Like, I would, if, if you didn't know, like, it was supposed to be based on something else... I guarantee you most people would have been ecstatic. Not ecstatic, but at least just impressed by it in general. Okay. Right, the spawn of Shellob has been removed. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, well, what about what about the music? How was the, the sound design in this film? Um, occasionally I thought it was a little bit overblown. But for the most part, it was really lovely. Um, there were some very nice... Um, kind of uh, character themes. There's a word for that, and I forgot what it is. Motif. Yes, li uh, light motif. That's the word. Uh, there were some very nice character themes. There was a really nice one for Medivh and quite a nice one for Garona. And there was like a, a, a main theme, which I think is just called Warcraft, uh, which, which was really kind of epic and soaring and, and martial. It was great. All right. Now you mentioned the, the 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 costumes and the makeup. How 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 was that in this? How are those in this movie? I really loved them. I I thought it was great. Um. Uh. I mean, there's there's things like um. The el the high elves uh who later on become blood elves show up, and they are in these amazing like red and gold outfits they're only there very briefly but it's like that is an amazing costume and things like some of the weapons and the shields um uh and the i mean the uh, all the way that the the orcs all look in their furs and the leathers and the the tusks and i was just sat there going "Ooh, you look really amazing so uh, you got some cosplay ideas from this film i'm guessing um, I think most of the, co the cosplay for Warcraft would probably be slightly beyond me because it's it, a lot of it is armor, and I'm not very good at armor, unfortunately. If I could, it'd be great, but uh, <laughs> okay. probably not. Brian, what about what about you? Makeup and costuming. No, the make I mean, like, I have kind of it's it's getting to the point where I, I've become a little bit cynical about CGI. I don't mind it as much, but I get to the point where like I don't know that's CGI. Like I get I can see it. I guess a little bit better this one there were moments where i'm like oh that's cgi and then there were other moments i was like oh that was cgi like i was surprised because it looked good because it looked smooth um music I, I think this had a standard i think fantasy flair to it um unfortunately i don't remember if this if they took anything from the games or anything like that and added it to the score again i don't either don't remember or wasn't paying attention uh, but uh, I don't. I don't think any of it was directly taken. There's yeah. some stuff that sounds vaguely similar. Yeah. Like the, the the music that they play when you enter Deadwind Pass is kind of similar, and the music in Storm Stormwind has a, a similar 
melodic progression, but it's not the same. Yeah, so that and that was sort of like what I, was, I guess I was trying to uh, say. My sentence structure yeah. is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> but and again, it just it, for what it, it what you were given it again is all sort of makes it you know an all rightish sort of film. Everything everything is sort of there, um, and perhaps you know it gets expanded upon if a sequel does get produced. Um, it might get produced thanks to China. There's a weird coincidence, but and I, I kind of think it's because I, I you know what because I most, all of China plays World of Warcraft. Yeah. I am not even kidding. No, I, I but I was sort of disappointed. There were some things I wanted the film to kind of do that is stupid when you think about it. Like I wanted the film to start out with like one guy and like at a farm or like by a castle. It's like, <laughs> man, we need more wood. <laughs> like I just wanted something like that. <laughs> oh man, there's there, there, there's there's an article on uh, on Cracked about that. It was like he was talking about how the uh, the it was written by J. F. Sargent, who I normally hate, but he knocked it out of the park with this one. He wrote about how he hated the Warcraft movie because it left out like peasants mining for gold and chopping down trees for resources. <laughs> he said this movie would not have been com- the, 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 this movie would not have been good unless there was a counter at the top right of the screen showing how much wood each uh, each side had. Well, I mean, and those, I will give it some credit. There is a scene where they're talking over a map, going over strategy. And the strategies and hexes, like the original game was. <laughs> but I do also love the fact that I'm not sure if this is a joke or just me looking too far into things. Because during that scene, one of the guys who just lost his son, which unfortunately I saw that coming a mile away, uh, there are some cliches in this film. But he's coming in, so he's like, "I just we should go in there with everybody, everything, all at once." I'm like, "Are you suggesting a Zerg rush?" <laughs> <laughs> Now, that didn't occur to me, and that's actually quite clever if that was intentional. Yeah. <laughs> so now I, I have to ask, because this is the one thing that I know about Warcraft. Did any of the orcs at any point in the film turn to one of their fellows and shout, Stop poking me? <laughs> no. Uh, you did very briefly hear an orc peon um, at one point, but that was all. <laughs> I mean, yeah, again, this is this is silly things. Like, if you actually made the film like the video game, it would not be very good because um, okay. it'll also be twelve hours long, and that's just the first stage. Okay, so let's <laughs> let we're kind of running short on time, so let's start wrapping things up here. So let's 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 wrap things up with those sort of general thoughts, final general thoughts on the film. So, uh, Skyblaze, let's start with you. Sum up your thoughts on on this movie. Um, I thought it was a perfectly acceptable fantasy film. It's not the best movie ever made by any stretch of the imagination, but it's fine. Um, I think that a lot of the the vitriol that was thrown at it by critics was entirely unjustified. I mean, some people were comp- uh, some critics comparing it to Battlefield Earth. No, no. Good lord, no. Uh, good god, no. Uh, it's it's fine as a fantasy as a kind of middle of the road fantasy film. Um, if you're into the Warcraft games, specifically into World of Warcraft, if you know a lot about the lore, you'll get a hell of a kick out of this. Um, if you're not, maybe get it on DVD or something. Okay, Brian, what about you? Final general thoughts on the film? Yeah, it, it was an alright film. Like, I wouldn't, again, yeah, I agree. It's not the best film in the world. I put it on my Facebook of like, hey, do you need to understand you know, Warcraft lore to enjoy this movie? No, probably not. You know, would it help? Oh, yeah, sure. You know, is this a good movie? Eh, not really. But at the same time, it's nothing, like, nothing terrible about it. It just it might be a good two-hour killer if you're curious. Yes, there's nothing particularly rage-inducing about it. It's just, it's fine. Yeah. It's okay. Okay. So, it, yeah, it de- from everything I hear, it definitely strikes me as a film that is, has, ha- is confident enough to stand on its source material. Uh, without ha- having to make too many compromises for you know the sake of the almighty dollar, which is 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 heartening. I think that's a, that's 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 the right direction that for a video game movie to take. And you know, one thing I, w- I will say, Blizzard has always been really good about crafting a, g- a good tale. So yeah. it makes sense that they would keep the reins pretty tight on this one. So uh, I don't know. Maybe I'll check it out. Maybe I won't. We'll we'll have to see what happens. But anyway, so now comes the part of the show where we give our final rating on the film. As always, our scale from best to worst is see it now, wait for matinee, wait for DVD, wait for cable, don't even bother. And Brian's rating, fuck this movie. So uh, Skyblade, start with you. What's what's your what's your final rating on the film? 
Uh, I'd say wait for a cheap matinee. Um, or DVD, depending on how... If, you, if, you, if you're if you a Warcraft fan, wait for a matinee. If you're not a Warcraft fan, get it, uh, get it on cheap DVD. Okay. And Brian, what's your rating? I, 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 I sort of just will say, yeah, this is definitely like a purchase, a DVD slash Blu-ray slash whatever it's going to be when it comes out. But, you know, like, it, just for that, you know, that kind of middle of the road area. Seen it in a film or theater, eh, that's nice. But I think once you get it, you'll understand. It's like, it's all right. Okay. All right. So, yeah, that's about all the time that we have for Nerd of the Third Power this week. We are going to be taking next week off for the 4th of July. Uh, so that we can all, you know, gorge ourselves on hot dogs and blow shit up with fireworks. And as Skyblaze calls it, Monday. <laughs> More or less. <laughs> so, you know, we'll, we'll, you know, well, well, you know, I, I will burn, I will burn a sausage Margaret Thatcher in effigy for you and, you know, at the, at the yearly barbecue. Do you make, so. do you, is it your point just to make everything weird? You've met Gonzo, right? <laughs> I was going to say, like, you, you've been on this show how long now? Just one day I, I look up going, he's going to be fine today. And I go, I'm expecting too much. <laughs> Mostly. So, but, uh, yeah, no, uh, we're going to be taking next week off for the 4th of July. So we will be back in a couple weeks. So thank you as always for tuning in. As always, I'm Dr. Gonzo. I'm Skyblaze. I am Brian. All right, we'll see you in a couple weeks. Happy Independence Day to all of our American listeners. Happy Monday to everybody else. And uh, we'll see you in two weeks. Taka, play us out.